Hi, and welcome to another Avid Visions tutorial. Um, this tutorial will deal with editing using Lightroom 2 instead of Photoshop for, an, uh, for a change. Up until this point, we've been teaching you how to edit your photos in an extreme sense in ways that alter the photo almost physically, like per or stereographic panorama or an antique effect that requires a lot of editing. So today I will just be showing you how to tweak the colors in your pictures, how to boost contrast, and even how to do selective coloring using Lightroom 2. So I have my picture um, imported into Lightroom here. I'm going to click on it and click on develop. And wait for it to load. Okay. Now, still loading? Okay. On the right here, you have your set of menus. Let's begin by opening up the basic menu. This is the one you always should want to start with. It allows you to edit the, your picture in very basic ways. So, the first thing I look for is if I have any blown out highlights. And right here, it's a little blown out. It's not too bad. So I'm just going to raise the recovery, which um, lowers the brightness of these highlights very slightly or not slightly I guess I mean it is at 50 okay I'm going to leave it at 50 now I'm going to change the contrast to my liking and even the clarity just a little bit all of these um, toolbars you don't have to get them precise there's not really a set or defined set of numbers that you should set it to every single time it's just based on what look you're kind of going for and I'm just checking things here and they look they look fine so once I have that done I'm going to close the basic tab and now I'm going to show you how to selectively desaturate stuff and selectively saturate parts of your picture so skip the tone curve menu for now and go to this HSL color and grayscale menu drop it down and you should be on saturation if you're not just click on saturation and what I'm trying to go for in this picture is to only have these leaves on the ground colored in because I thought it would make an interesting effect seeing as how these leaves are sort of just sitting on these tiles so the leaves look orange so I'm gonna only keep the orange at zero and try and lower absolutely everything else Now this is the beginning of my picture. I want these leaves to be a little bit more saturated so I'll go ahead and boost this to give it a more dramatic effect. And as you can see the leaves here they make a nice effect on the tiles. Okay so what I don't want is all of this random mm, orange sitting in my trees. There's dead leaves still in the trees so you can go ahead and click on this brush tool right here. Make sure you have the effect set to saturation and make it negative 100. Now I'm working on a Mac here so I can just scroll using two fingers to set the size of the brush. Your feather can be whatever you want it to be at, depending on how precise you want it to be. But for now I'm just going to go over everything very briefly. Okay, now, as you can see here, even though it was set to negative 100 saturation, let me quit out of the brush tool quick just so I can show you, there are still blotches of orange in the trees. So you're actually going to have to go over it one more time. So there's my old brush. As you can see, if you just put your mouse over it, it'll show you everything you've painted over. But with the same um, settings, you can actually just click again and start brushing again. Just go every, over everything that we just went over before. And it's looking good. So let me get out of that. There are these random blotches of orange, but 
in order to conserve time, I'm not going to get rid of this. Okay, now we almost have our finished product here. Since you're in grayscale, it helps to really um, up the contrast sometimes, which I like to do. But you don't want to up the contrast on everything. You just want to um, sort of um, point out what your subjects are using darker shadows. So as you can see here, under this little ledge of this fountain, if I would lower the contrast only on that, it would really bring out the fountain in this picture. So I'm actually going to go back into the brush tool, and this time change the effect to uh, exposure. Set it to negative 4, just so I can see, visibly see what I'm trying to change. And just go over everything that's underneath this ledge. And it will change your picture to be pitch black on those parts, but don't worry about that, we can change that later. This is just to visibly see how we're affecting the picture. And I'm not going to be really precise on this. Once again, in order to conserve time. Just going to go over everything really quickly. Okay, now here it gets tricky. It sort of gets smaller, so I'm going to have to let go and scroll down a bit to lower the brush size and continue going up this ledge. Now the reason I'm doing this, oops, I made a mistake there. Control Z will undo any mistake that you have done. But anyway, the reason I'm doing this is to bring attention to what I want the viewers to view in my pictures. I usually do this very subtly in almost all of my pictures now where I go over um, certain aspects of the picture and lower the exposure on it or make it darker. Now, once you have all that, you sort of up the exposure until you like what look you've been achieve you're achieving now. Minus six looks, minus one, I'll, I'll deal with that. As you can see, it looks like there's a shadow there, and it just sort of adds to the mood of the picture. If you really wanted to, you could um, fake some shadows on the tiles. I didn't want to do that. That's going a bit too far for my taste, but this is basically the finished product. And if you want, you can add a vignette, so close your HSL color grayscale tab and just open up vignettes, and you could just lower this amount tab, or slider, left, if you wanted to. I don't have this in my finished product, which I will show you, or which I'll at least give a link to in the description of this video, but this is my finished product. I will show you, um, I will make another video concerning some other features of Lightroom, but this was just going to be a very quick video. I hope you learn a couple of things, and thank you for watching.